this, uh, the disaccharide sample. This uh, sample gets placed on ice shortly after being retrieved from the patient. We here in our facility have only wet ice available to us, so we do place it on wet ice. You are able to place these on dry ice as well or a freezer. Once this specimen is placed on ice, it must remain frozen for the entire time during transportation and arrival to the lab. We keep it on wet ice until we get a courier that has dry ice available to us, and from there they are tra it's transported frozen. When it comes to shipping your sample to the lab, one of the most important things is that you recognize that the sample cannot be thawed once it's frozen. You may be grabbing the sample from wet ice and then placing it in the styrofoam shipping box where it will freeze, or you could be grabbing the sample from a freezer. If you're grabbing it from the freezer, make sure that your dry ice is ready to go because you do not want it sitting on a table to thaw. Once you gather all your samples, whether it be on dry ice or from a freezer, you can place them all in a single biohazard bag as long as that bag is able to lay flat. You could have 15, 20 samples in one bag as long as it's laying flat. The tube that the sample is in is called a primary receptacle. It has to be watertight. That will be placed in a secondary receptacle, like a biohazard bag, that is also watertight and sealed. Inside that bag needs to be an absorbent material. Right now I'm showing you gauze, but you could use paper towels or anything that will absorb anything that leaks. Once you have all of your samples in a bag, you can place it on dry ice in the box. The box I have here has styrofoam in it to keep dry ice, and it will keep all of your samples frozen. Make sure you put enough dry ice in the box that the samples will remain, remain frozen during transport. This, I recommend, is no longer than 24 hours. Send your samples overnight. Close the styrofoam box. Make sure the lid is on tight. Sometimes dry ice can get stuck between the box and the lid, not creating a good seal. So make sure it's on there tight. Your box has to have a couple different types of stickers on it to travel with biohazardous substance. First, you want to make sure you have the dry ice UN1845 sticker. On this sticker will indicate how many kilograms of dry ice you have, the shipper, and where it's going. You also need a UN3373 Biological Substance Category B sticker. This tells whoever's carrying it that there's a biohazardous substance in the box. You also need up arrows, letting the courier know and the receiver know which side is up. Once you have all those stickers on there, you can grab all of your requisitions for each patient and place it on top of a styrofoam box. This way the paper does not get wet from being exposed to the dry ice. With your samples inside, seal your box up with tape. With your box properly labeled, take a shipping envelope and put your shipping label inside. Close the flap and peel off the large adhesive on the back. Place it on top of the box. And take off that last piece of adhesive. Now you're ready to ship. To ensure that the samples arrive within 24 hours, I've already scheduled my pickup.